Well, joining me now here is uh, the outgoing leader of uh, the Democratic Alliance, uh, Western Cape uh, Premier Helen Zilla. Well, how are you? Are you well? A big day today. Yes, I'm very well. And uh, this is a highlight for the Democratic Alliance, a turning point for South Africa. So I'm very excited and I'm very well. Well, um, a lot of us have been saying it is indeed uh, quite a big moment, probably the biggest moment uh, of the Democratic Alliance uh, since uh, 1994. Uh, is that your sense as well? Well, no one could have predicted in 1994 that the Democratic Alliance would grow from a tiny party of 1.7% of the vote to nearly one out of every four voters in South Africa today. We have four million votes. We worked very hard to achieve that. And each leader in the Democratic Alliance tries to take the party a step forward. I hope I've done that. I've had a fantastic team. We've doubled the vote of the DA since we took the reins in, uh, 99, uh, in 2006, uh, 2007 actually it was. I'm trying to think back now. Eight years ago it was. And in fact, it's been a wonderful journey. Four million votes, great platform for the new leader to start with. And now it's going to be his job, whoever that leader is going to be elected tomorrow, to take the party forward. I'm going to ask you about those leaders. I'm also going to ask you about um, your stint um, as well. But I want to take you perhaps a few steps um, back, back to the day when Tony Leon took a very, very tiny party and of course made his mark in bringing it to where it is today. Just reflect back, uh, please, if you will. Post-1994, here's a, a white leader in a country that is being led uh, by a predominantly black uh, African National Congress and he has to take it. Would you have thought that he would have uh, done uh, or sort of laid the kind of basis that he was able to, to, to lay? No one would have thought after the 1994 election that the DP could have survived at that stage. We were a tiny party. We had seven MPs. There were much, much bigger opposition parties than we were. And of course, we had to try and be a clear alternative to the major ruling party that had overwhelming popularity. So no one could have thought at the time that we could have grown. Well, we set ourselves the goal under Tony's leadership to become the official opposition in five years. Everyone just laughed at us. And of course, that's exactly what we did. And then we set ourselves the goal of becoming a party of government and everybody laughed at us again and that's exactly what we did. And now when we say we're on our way to the union buildings, not many people laugh anymore because they know the DA will one day be the crux of a new government of South Africa, a non-racial party believing in the rule of law, constitutionalism, a place for everyone, a real opportunity for all, redress for the legacy of apartheid. People know that about the DA now. And we move forward and we're the only party that grows in every election. What uh, for you though went into that, uh, shall I call it, foundation phase, that which presumably sort of is what has come to anchor the party? Yes, the foundation phase was very, very important. And we had to ensure that South Africans understood that opposition was not disloyal. Yes, there is a governing party, and when the majority of the people vote for a party, that party governs. That is democracy. But it's also very important in a democracy to have a strong opposition, to have an opposition that calls the government to account, to have an opposition that's putting up alternative policies, that has an opposition that is a sharp watchdog for any corruption. That is just as important to a democracy as a strong government. In fact, it's very bad for any country to have one party that's too powerful. It's always important to have a balance. And the closer the balance is, the better the governing party actually governs because a government must be frightened of the voters. If a government is not frightened of the voters, if the government believes that the voters will just keep on voting for them whatever they do, you can't have good government. So an opposition is very, very important and a good balance is very important. And that is what the DP understood at the time. When everybody else was going into governments of national unity, which was important, 
but there was also a role for a party that said opposition is also important and we're going to grow the opposition and that's what we did. Now there are lots of um, opinions and analysis over whether the, um, the, the, the coalition the absorbing the National Party actually helped um, uh, the, 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 the Democratic Party at uh, the time forming the Democratic um, Alliance. Do you think that uh, that particular episode should be discounted completely or do you think it played its part, a significant part at that, but perhaps later on when the wheels came off, that was probably one of the ugliest moments, but uh, that shouldn't take away from the fact that that coming together, Dunadering, as many people called it at the time, uh, was actually essential and did play a significant role in bringing the Democratic Alliance to what it is today. Yes, I think you're right, Will. It was very, very controversial at the time. But if you're a tiny opposition party, you have to grow. And we had become the official opposition. We had beaten the National Party in the 1999 election, if you recall. And of course, that was a very big moment. And then we felt it was important to consolidate the opposition. But obviously, there's no point in just consolidating opposition parties for the sake of doing so, because you have to have a coherent political philosophy. And we are not racial nationalists. We are not racial nationalists. And there was no point in bringing parties together that had different ways of looking at politics and understanding politics. And so it was very difficult to get two different political philosophies together in one party. But eventually, I think the people who were nationalists went to the African National Congress. That made sense. Nationalists should work together. Racial nationalists should work together. And those who wanted to build an open opportunity society for all remained with the DA. And so the National Party actually crumbled and broke up and we could build a new party on a clear alternative philosophy, the Open Opportunity Society for All. Fast forward, Helen Ziller becomes the leader of the Democratic Alliance. Um, reflect on your highs and lows. <laughs> well, I was a reluctant politician. I never intended to become a politician at all. It just happened almost by mistake when I was the chair of the governing body of my children's primary school. And I was writing a lot about uh, education policy at the time. And Tony Leon asked me to revise the education policy of the Democratic Party at the time, which I did. And then he asked me to put my hat in the ring to become elected, and I got onto their list. And that's how I got into politics, by mistake. I never intended to be a representative politician, although I was always interested and involved in politics in various extra-parliamentary movements like the Black Sash and others. But to become a politician was never on my plan. So it happened by mistake. And you know, in life when a door opens for you, you walk through it. So becoming elected was a highlight. And then becoming an MEC was an unbelievable highlight. And then becoming the leader of the opposition in the provincial legislature in the Western Cape was a highlight. And then of course, we had the incredible highlight of uh, being elected in Cape Town and my becoming the mayor on that very tenuous and fragile seven-party coalition and making that work and making us a successful party of government and then winning an overall majority in the province of the Western Cape and then 26 municipalities throughout South Africa. Oh, there's just been highlight upon highlight. Well, there are people who count among your low lights um, the fact that um, you would uh, Controversially, I mean, you appointed uh, predominantly male uh, cabinet failing women when in fact you had an opportunity to actually affirm them. Well, many people who were critical, and obviously I would have liked to have had a much more gender diverse cabinet, but people don't really understand that you don't have a choice of everyone there is. You only have a choice of the people who are elected on your list. And I had 22 people elected on the list and I had to put a cabinet together that could really turn around quite a failing government that we had to take over. And so when I looked at every single portfolio, I picked the person that I thought was best suited for that particular job. Now we are much more gender diverse because we put a lot of attention onto that. But at the time I came in for a lot of criticism 
but I really had to think about fixing government at the time and we had very few women on our list and that's where the problem started. Very, very briefly, we have run out of time. What's going to be your future role now? What are you going to do? What will you be doing um, when a new, after a new leader will be, will be elected tomorrow? Well, I've already got a big job to do. I'm Premier of the Western Cape and I got a mandate. Within the party? Year. Within the party. Look, I will do what the new leadership would like me to do. I'm not going to start trying to steer from behind or interfere in things. I know that when a new leader takes office, they've got to be given their space to shape their vision, to shape their team, to drive their pathway into the future. I will respect that. Well, I'm Helen Zilla. Thank you very much and all Thank the best you. for the future. Thank you very much. Well, Helen Zilla, the outgoing leader of the Democratic Alliance. Well, the issue of a black leader has been very much in the news, given, of course, that uh, it will be the first time that the Democratic Alliance is going to be headed um, by a, a black person.